Okay. Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Meeting. Today we are Tuesday, 10th of May 2022. Um, as usual, I'm adding the collaborative notes that will be published in Community Jenkins IO and on GitHub. This session is recorded as well. So the, I've just added on the Zoom link and on IRC the link to the collaborative notes. Today, we have Damien Duportal, myself, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White, and Stéphane Merle. Let's get started with the announcement. First of all, last week, the weekly release was failing to be released because we had a, a credential on Azure that was expired. So that has been fixed. Thanks, Mark, for re-triggering the second time the release. And the release was successful a few hours after. Uh, for information, that credential is now, is now under the management of infrastructure as code. So everyone here is should be able and has the right to update it in the future. However, uh, we have created a new issue on help desk to think and walk around something that will watch the expiration for different kind of credential from certificate to API tokens. That's not the subject there, but we have that issue. So if you have ideas or if you want to re review it, the link has been added on the notes. Um, we have the weekly, we have a weekly today. Uh, I haven't checked the status, Mark. I did check the status. It was stopped by a restart of the Jenkins controller and oh. was waiting to resume. So there's some bug in the declarative or in the pipeline that's causing it not to correctly resume. So I just stopped it and restarted it. It was about 10 minutes ago that it started. So roughly two hours from now, it will have completed the build phase and start the packaging phase. Okay, I really need to either fix that problem or stop merging pull request on the Jenkins LTS token. Actually, in Kubernetes. I don't think Sorry. either of those is is the yeah. I I think some, certainly there's a bug somewhere, and that bug it would be nice to fix because they should be should be resumable, right? They should be durable. But may, may I, it's may I ask one of you to open an issue while we're speaking about that? Or I will do it at the end, but we need a, sure. an issue to track that element. Uh, is a help desk issue OK? Or what would you like? Yes. Yeah. OK, Perfectly. I'll do it. Great. Many thanks. Um, OK, so we'll monitor the image. Is there anything else about the past or current weekly, Mark, or the others? Uh, no, the okay. I expect it to proceed. It looks fine. I've got to review the change log and be sure that the change log is accurately describing all the changes, but that's just usual work. Okay. Um, next announcement. Next week, uh, there will be uh, there will be a security advisory. So please don't merge anything. I, I, I'm looking at you, Damien Duportal. Yes, I'm speaking to myself. Uh, not to merge anything on the puppets that could impact trusted, uh, just because it might be used for some components. Um, but since this is mostly plugins, we should not have anything to do on trusted or CI. And the security team will take care, as usual, of installing the released plugin on CI Jenkins IO and restarting it. Just we have to be careful to not change anything. Uh, the weekly should be proceed and treated like every week. Is there any other question on that uh, advisory? OK, I will take care of sending a reminder early morning US or during the day for Europe in IRC, just to remind everyone that on that day. Other announcements? Nope. OK. So let's start. Let's start with the work did on during the past weekly iteration. Um, we had an issue with uh, repo Jenkins IO that has been fixed. Uh, that was an issue on Google Compute Cloud. 
uh, that was a great opportunity for Stefan to test the work on Datadog metric that we'll speak uh, later. Uh, that show us that the current Datadog, uh, some of our current Datadog monitoring are not working as expected. They always are green. So Stefan is working on fix. Um, I don't have anything else, despite the fact that uh, we are not able to have status Jenkins IO being automatically updated when there is an issue on GFrog. Uh, so we have to still to rely on the good faith of any contributor. That time it was team, so thanks for that. Uh, that issue was not caused by us or by GFrog, and it spent a few hours before uh, their platform was back. So right now, no action item, but uh, yes, we are. There is clearly room for improvement in automating the status Jenkins IO websites. So let's get started by fixing the monitoring for repo Jenkins, and then we can take decision once we have a uh, monitoring that works as expected. Uh, we have one fix issue. I won't treat it there. It wasn't the correct issue tracker. Um, all the issues around infra report and report and repository permission updater have been fixed. No issue uh, unless I'm mistaken. Um, so that's fixed. Don't hesitate to interrupt me if you if I forget something. Uh, we had the LTS release last week that has been applied to all the Jenkins controller that we manage that are using the LTS line. So CI, trusted, search CI, and release. Uh, no issue whatsoever. Almost everything was done automatically uh, when the issue was opened by Alex. So good for our automated system. We granted access to Bazel to some, to some part of the infrastructure. The goal is to give him enough field and access and privileges so he can help us on diagnosing the issue on CI Jenkins IO from the precedent past outages. Um, we added something with the postmortem uh, that I still have to publish. Uh, Basil will need access to the EKS, the Amazon, the Amazon cluster. Uh, in order to be able to diagnose. So we have to to check with him if he can access the AWS uh, CloudBees account, which is uh, the actual account running all our machine. So we'll take care of that part. That's why I haven't created a public issue because it's still the CloudBees account. So it's another process than the usual. Outside this, Basil confirmed that he has access to everything and he has everything required. The issue about the Azure service principle. So you have all the details how on how we can use uh, infrastructure as code to rotate Azure credential, or at least where it is. Um, thanks, Tim, on the initial issue about tracking. It sounds like we might have uh, really nice solutions to avoid credential at all in certain cases that will avoid having credential. And finally, there were, I'm not sure, but missing permission, I, I forgot. Oh, okay, Tim, you fixed that one. Okay, so Alex had to be allowed on the correct group to access release CI to perform the LTS release last Wednesday. Thanks, Tim, for fixing that. Seems like the key clock was terribly slow, which was Just horrible. Yeah. Still not sure if it's related to LDAP, which is OM killed a lot. Um, okay. Uh, did we create an issue? Yeah, it's on key cloak. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tim, for handling that and having the patience and handling the frustration created by a slow key clock. <laughs> that can be terrible. So these are the main tasks that we completely closed and we can forget about. Now the work in progress, unless I forgot any closed tasks. Yep. Okay. Um, Blushan, replacing Blushan in default display URL. Uh, so we try to merge it after asking question on the tickets and email. Thanks for everyone who answered. 
uh, but uh, as coked by some users, um, the, when you enable the classic UI, it seems like that it's not using the redirect uh, endpoint on Jenkins controller, which means that it changes the permalink of on the GitHub check generated, which means you cannot ask a user to set its preference to classic user or blue ocean, and you cannot have something that is guaranteed to work in the future. So we roll back the change as on the line, and I haven't checked. It seems like it's something related to the display plugin. Is that correct, Tim? Yeah, it looks like a bug or a missing feature that um, the redirect was not implemented for the classic. Well, if you if you force the setting with a system property, it doesn't seem to redirect. So that means it's it's exiting our scope as infra people. Uh, we need that. Uh, I'm I'm not sure what is the usual process. Should we? Op yeah, we might have want to open an issue on the plugin tracker, right? I would say yeah, open an issue with the plugin and then just either block or close this ticket until that's resolved. Okay. Um, I propose to ask to Kalolav Nimetelo because it sounds like that uh, that person clearly have a clear understanding of the pro what the problem is. So I will rely on them. And opening an issue on the plugin tracker. So I propose that we move that uh, ticket outside of the milestone until uh, something new come. Sounds okay for everyone because I don't see any action, other action that we could do. Yes. Um, next one, there are still two open uh, tasks about CI Jenkins IO. There has been two outage two weeks ago. We ran a post-mortem last Friday with Basil. Um, I have to finish the notes and publish them. Basil has everything that he needs except the EKS cluster and is walking around. Um, the summary is uh, there isn't any action expected from the infra team. Basil will open the issues on help desk when he will need. Uh, so we have to wait from him. The idea is that there are different clues, but he's working on trying to reproduce to better apprehend and comprehend the issues so he can he can share some reproducible tests to the plugins or the Jenkins core parts that are creating issues. We identified that the root cause that was that uh, trigger all the bugs and unwanted behaviors was related to the Docker API rate limit. So the only thing we can do on our side is knowing that if we are again API rate limited on the container and CI Jenkins IO, then we only have to wait and let the controller deal with the build queue. We just have to be patient. So we are waiting for Basil, no ETA, because he has a lot of other stuff to do. Uh, the thing is, if he needs something, we have to provide him uh, as much as quick as possible to unblock him. That's the only uh, takeaway. Thanks to the work of Stefan, who split two weeks ago the account for push and pull, we should delay the, uh, the threshold of the API rate limit. I got news from Docker that now Jenkins is part of and his tag as open source program for them. So it's the DockerCon that week. So they, are, they have in mind that we need that. They should be able to add our accounts on the open with an open, uh, almost unlimited API rate limit in the upcoming days or eventually weeks. Worst case, end of, end of May, they guaranteed. Um, Datadog, there are two subjects. Uh, first one is adding a new monitoring probe for repo Jenkins CI. So that's uh, Stefan on that. Uh, work in progress. Uh, yeah. We thought it could be easy to add, but in fact, we uncovered that all the Datadog synthetic tests that we have defined through Terraform are always answering. Everything is working as expected. The, the, the so, synthetic as, with a tip as brother. With a type browser, type, so we have sorry. so we have to recreate these probes 
change them to the types that Stefan selected and tested on a single one. And we might also have a campaign of migrating some of the probes that are run by the Docker Datadog container on our Kubernetes cluster back to the API. Still not sure why do we run such tests, but we have some work around cleaning up the Datadog probes before being able to have something working. Um, depreciation of on call, Stefan, I assume you didn't add time to spend on that one? No, nope, sorry. Is it okay if uh, someone else take it since it will start to be uh, quite urgent to take uh, that? With, with pleasure. Is there someone volunteering on that no. one? Yeah, no problem. Okay, you want to take it, uh, Hervé? Yep. Cool, thanks. Um, I'm available if you need any indication or precision on that part. Just know that both of you, Stefan and Ave, will have to work on the same Terraform configuration, so that might have some impact. Can be fun. Um, migrate rating Jenkins IO to Azure. Uh, so the shift to Kubernetes went very well. Great job, uh, Stefan. The only two items to close that issue are we clean the virtual machine on AWS, but we still have to clean the old database, uh, managed database on Amazon uh, and documentation updates. So almost there, we are at 90%, but still some cleanup tasks before being able to finish. Is it okay for you, Stefan, to keep that task for this iteration? Yes, please. Oh, sorry. Please. Uh, we still have the mirror in Singapore request. So we are in a work, both Hervé and I, to finish collecting what, what do we, we, we weren't able to, we failed to find a documentation about what to tell and ask the people proposing a mirror. How much space do they need? What they need? Where are the instructions for them to start mirroring? I'm sure there has been emails or knowledge, but we weren't able to find something on the own book. So we only you... found, we only found a blog post from Tyler uh, saying uh, that the Infra team will, uh, will give all the recommends uh, by mail. Good. You just have to check the Jenkins Infra mailing list. It's in there from previous posts by Olivia. That's the, that's the the idea. So thanks for confirming for confirming team that we are in the correct direction. So the status of that task for the upcoming iteration is Erwin and I are going to search mailing lists, repositories. We are going to write a run book with the information, and then we can contact back on the in, in initial email thread to tell them, okay, you need that, you have to do that, and and let's proceed. Yeah, you should. Generally, should be able to copy basically Olivia's last response to the last one. That confirmed. Thanks a lot. Um, Hervé is work, work in progress for building our own Windows image, Windows Docker image on Infra CI. So it's uh, mainly uh, two, two areas providing uh, Windows virtual machine image with all the tooling uh, with the same feature sets as we have on Linux to lint the Docker file, to build the Docker file and publish them. And it's on the Packer image templates. Second part is the pipeline library that we are using. We need a feature parity. And so Hervé is working on that part, which is mainly uh, being able to execute the same command between PowerShell and Linux bash. Um, mirrors Jenkins IO. Uh, so yesterday we switched uh, the main consumer from the domain mirrors to get Jenkins IO. We also changed to HTTPS. I haven't seen an issue what, until now, but either I might have missed or it was silent. Um, we the goal is to track. Uh, all the usages that we could have of the former mirrors, the Jenkins.io domain. I'm working on a blog post that uh, I would expect uh, be published end of week, if it's okay, 
to tell that Mirror Jenkins IO will be forced to HTTPS and explaining that we will uh, consolidate all the Mirror infrastructure using the new one. So everything has been tested on Kubernetes. If you point your DNS for the Mirror's Jenkins IO to point to the IP of the public AKS cluster, it works very well. The goal is then being able to remove all the Mirror brain stuff. So you're keeping the old domain, not just turning it off? Uh, no, because we also serve the update center JSON on that machine and it's used but for packaging. I mean, mirrors.jenkins.io is keeping that domain. Oh, yes. Uh, that should be a C name uh, pointing to the to the mirror bits, just to avoid breaking installation or proxy on some users. All right. Right. I, I highly doubt. Well, mm. to know how much of it is, would actually transparently upgrade. The, the the access log of the Apache were showing a, a lot of IPs that weren't ours, uh, still using it some time to time. We have. Were they were they using it on HTTP or HTTPS though? On the HTTP because there isn't any HTTPS yeah. on Miro. Ah, no, good, good point. I haven't checked because uh, if you check it on HTTPS, you see the, I think it's fallback or PKG page. So it might answer HTTP 200 while it's misleading. No, uh, good to check. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, it's but, probably not much effort uh, to keep uh, it going the domain. Yeah, uh, I mean, mirror Jenkins IO pointing to the mirrors still makes sense in terms of uh, naming convention and it's few lines. It's, it's not that uh, that big effort. Yeah, I assume um, there's, some, there's some comment or something saying that this is just a compatibility yeah. domain. It's nothing in our infrastructure yeah. points to it. Exactly. Um, I've tried different things during the weekend because it seems like it is going worse and worse in terms of uh, response time for the update center. Uh, we need to do something about that. That will be the priority for the upcoming weeks as well. Uh, but still, I did some cleanup during the weekend. There were three PostgreSQL instances installed and running on that machine in parallel. And there were a lot of Apache error logs. So. It happened that the change I did, did did not improve anything and we are still spammed by the alerts, but at least uh, now we only have one fully working instance of mirror brain. Um, most of the issues are related to that error message uh, about the scoreboard for Apache server because Apache server due to mirror brain is configured to MPM event, which is a set of uh, dynamic workers to handle the incoming request. And it seems like that the setup for Apache is not correctly done on that instance. Uh, but is, since Olivier and I decreased the size of the machine, uh, we went from 16 CPU to eight a few months ago. Um, I bet that change, we didn't correctly update it the Apache server uh, fine tuning. That might have an impact, which resulted in a lot of uh, hanging workers that fill the queue. And so Apache starts to answer slower and slower. Most of the time, a reload or a restart of Apache helps, but still it's an issue. Um, uh, that's an old way of configuring Apache and there are issues with Apache 2.4 with the MPM event configuration. So as the goal is to try to deprecate mirror brain as soon as possible so we can go back to MPM pre-fork where uh, Apache work like Nginx with a set of static child processes, always the same size. It's more deterministic and you can pin them per core. So it's clearly easier to scale it up. So right now, still uh, issues on that area. Based on that, uh, we have migrate update CI Jenkins to another cloud. Um, so the idea and the consensus is to start spawning an instance of update CI on the Oracle cloud system, and then start updating all the delivery and sync scripts for the releases. So they can start publishing on both AWS and the new Oracle machine on the first time. That machine should not be available right now. And as soon as we have the same feature set on both machine, we can switch the, the DNS in a few weeks on that new machine. That will also allow us to decrease the AWS bill of 3K. So that's an important one. 
Um, Hervé, you mentioned that you were interested in uh, starting working on the Terraform area. Yes. Damien, yes. I think the help desk ticket may have an extra two letters in it, three letters. It's updates.jenkins.io, right? Oh, yes, correct. I just changed it. I just changed it. So many thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, but it, it is updates.jenkins.io that's being changed. So the first step right now is to prepare the foundation. So we need an Oracle Terraform project. And that will be better to start importing the existing uh, two virtual machines. But that second part is optional. We can do it in parallel. But we need a foundational Terraform project to manage us code. And then we'll have to start to create a mach virtual machine with Terraform and uh, integrate it with Puppet. And you, and you plan uh, to use a run robin in DNS to use both of them for a while? That could be an idea, yeah. OK. That's a nice idea. So I will update that ticket and link back with Oracle. Um, so are you interested on starting the project and starting working on that one? And if you are interested, do you think you, you can start working on that this week? Yeah. So that one, we keep it for uh, next iteration. Uh, the new monitoring probe, so work in progress, as we said. That's on your area, uh, Stefan. I yeah. propose to uh, the realign repo Jenkins CI.org mission uh, for GFrog. I propose that we deprioritize this one for now because we don't have the bandwidth and it's not top priority. Is it good for everyone? Agreed for me. Um, install RNGD on all Jenkins controller. That's a minor task, but still a good exercise for Stefan to get autonomous on puppets. So that's a low priority task. Uh, that's the first step of what Basil uh, reported. The goal is to install that package to improve the usage of random number generations. So the first step is it doesn't cost anything and it's an improvement to have that package installed on all the virtual machine managed by Puppet. That won't fix the whole issue. We still need to check how does it work and integrate with Docker container for the virtual machines. And same question on the Kubernetes area because it depends on the underlying host operating system and how the container engine is using dev random and urandom. But first step first, Installing the package on the virtual machine is the good first step. So work in progress. Is it okay, yeah. Stefan, to keep working on that one this week or is it too much yes. given the amount of time? I, I found a few information that I want to speak with you about on that area. Okay. Too. So you will need some, uh, some yeah, sync after what? Okay. Yes. So we keep it on next milestone. Finally, Digital Ocean sponsorship. Uh, I've stopped the cluster because it's my payment card that is configured on digital. <laughs> we were Cheers. going to run out of credits with the last week or previous week's rate. The cluster is not deleted, it's disabled and I only removed the node pool of beefy machines that cost a lot. Now we have uh, almost $150 of credit left, which will allow to stay for eight to nine months in that state. So next step now is to contact Digital Ocean and tell them that we are running out of credits. So that was a nice uh, sponsorship. And then request if they want to continue the sponsorship. So we need more credits. And if they are willing to, and if also they are willing to increase given we are planning to use it more and more, uh, given the reliability of the service. Uh, I don't know if anyone is interested on maintaining that relationship. By default, that, uh, uh, that will fall back to the infrastructure officer, e.g. myself. I don't mind. But if anyone is willing to, to do it, uh, no problem for me as well. Yeah, well, I'll uh, draft a mail and ask your opinion on that. Nice. Okay, um, these were 
the thing. So I will uh, finish the update uh, at the end of the meeting. I wanted to check with you the infra team sync next uh, issues. So that's the milestone where we put the, it's a kind of back burner, but- uh, yeah. You have to so get back the, the mail, the press mail uh, issue because we had an, an answer from Kosuke. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not on back burner. Oh, uh, I haven't, yes. So uh, Kosuke answered to us that he has the mailgun account. So he's gonna send it to either Mark or I uh, in encrypted. Uh, as soon as Mark or I have the access, we will update the issue and put it on the current milestone. Uh, but I propose we react uh, on Kosuke event based. Yeah, you're right. Uh, because uh, he might send an email this week or next week. I mean, he is a busy person, so I don't mind. But yeah, I don't want to put some uh, ETA for us in that area. But event correct, trigger. thanks. Well. Uh, thanks for that one. That's a good thing to remember. If we have access to Mailgun, that should help us to see the list of elements and to create uh, an alias uh, right now. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from the Linux Foundation about the program manager officer that should help us to get started on hosting email. So I'm not sure who to contact, Mark. Is this something I should send an email to the Jenkins board to, to escalate? So, so this is your question is from Linux Foundation. Who do we ask for help? Uh, on the CDF, sorry. Um, on oh, CDF. Linux uh, so Foundation told me to contact the PMO on the CDF. So they oh. ask them for us to be email hosted. Okay, so what we probably need to do is contact Andrew Grimberg. Grimberg. Yeah, that's now he's yeah. he's actually at Linux Foundation, not CDF, but he can kind guide us on the next step. So let me look up his contact information and I'll put it in the notes. Cool. And I uh, will take care of that uh, on the email part. Um, Grimberg. Okay, there we go. We have a new ticket that I want to put on top. Uh, Hervé, as I mentioned last week, uh, created an issue to specify how to have two Azure Terraform project, one for the Azure network, including uh, the DNS, the virtual network, and the other for the Azure, like what we worked on with writing, the CI Jenkins AU virtual machine and other pieces of infrastructure. The goal is that by splitting in two projects, we should limit the risk of us breaking down the entire infrastructure, like Olivia and Tyler had issues in the past. That's the reason why they stopped automating the Azure infrastructure management with Terraform. And most of the time it's DNS, and sometimes it's virtual network. Hence the need to have two separated projects so we can upgrade infrastructure as code on the Azure area with confidence. Whatever the whatever kind of contributor we have, whatever skills, and we can do it quite often without being slowed on by fear. So that will be a nice improvement. Um, there is already a lot of tasks, uh, Hervé. Are you okay if we keep that one on top of the back burner, but we start once you will have worked on the Oracle part? Yep. Which means if you are quick enough this week and you're able to fulfill all the tasks, don't hesitate to take that task additionally, but only if you were able to fix the current milestone. Is that okay for everyone? Yep. Um, I don't see other important topic on the back banner right now. Do you see some? We have the key cloak horrific performance. Oh yes, no, there is one asked by Alex. Manage new crowding project through LDesk. All oh, right, yes. Um, so the idea is to use, if I understand correctly, to use the LDesk repository uh, also for uh, uh, for the crowding projects. I don't see a, any issue. Uh, Alex already opened the pull request on the issue template, which is really nice. Thanks, Alex, for that. Is there any reason for not uh, accepting this request? Do you see any? No, um, I was wondering uh, how we could also include in uh, RPU uh, request 
since it's related to plugin management more than uh, help desk or infra issue mm -hmm. but it's uh, since uh, it has to be added to existing plugin uh, yeah it's a good place for these requests for now but later i think it should be included in the repository uh, permission updater uh, template um, i had another questions about crowdin uh, will it also means it will uh, Will the current uh, translate plugin will be deprecated or un uninstalled? Not, not really, because they are they are separate and independent things. So okay. you can you can still use the translate plugin if you wish. It, I think Crowdin is much easier, but but we what we hope is that. Crowdin will become the de facto preferred way of doing translations because it's so much easier for translators and for proofreaders. Okay. So for the, did that answer your question, Hervé? Yeah, yeah, it's answered. Right. Okay. I'll open an issue on this plugin to, to, to I've noticed uh, some issue on it, uh, like uh, it's completely, uh, unreadable uh, when you are in dark mode or something like that, but it's mm. minor. Uh, oh, the translate plugin. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for the crowd in, yeah, I've, I have just have uh, some suggestion pending on the, it's uh, on the, his requ uh, pull request. I'd like to add uh, localization in the title crowding localization okay. project or something so it's a little bit more clear what okay. it's for when you don't know what is crowding may i ask you to to take the issue then uh, yeah. so you can uh, discuss with alex and get that sounds good for you yep many thanks sorry um i don't see other team sync topic Jenkins. Uh, yeah, the rest are a bonus. We have the update CLI, uh, maybe separation at the moment in time, um, being able to have a, a, a folder with specific uh, multi branch jobs or on a GitHub organization scanning on update uh, on infra CI that will only handle the update CLI pipelines. Uh, as per suggestion of Daniel Beck, we could use, uh, I forgot the name of that plugin, where you define one Jenkins file and every repository with a token file will use that Jenkins file. So that's an intermediate between GitHub organization scanning, where you need to define a Jenkins file each time you want it to be built, and a full shared library. Um, the token file is only a marker that say uh, enable or disable without having to specify a Jenkins file each time. That will avoid first need requiring uh, and the Jenkins file and the Jenkins file gates and the Jenkins file dot update CLI, et cetera. That would avoid the complex pipelines such as the one we have today, where as soon as you use a declarative matrix, you have to wait for update CLI to perform its diff and apply before being able to really do things. Uh, if update CLI fails, it fails your pipeline. So it's kind of complicated. And the, uh, being able to manage different pipeline and the only way is creating different jobs. So if anyone is interested and have time, we can have on this, but it's nice to have, it's not top priority. That's all for me. I don't have other topics. Mm. The Blue Ocean link Blue with Olivier, Ocean. but I don't know if from our conversation. Uh, um, oh, the CI Blue Ocean .io? Yeah. I have no idea. Um, so we ask, uh, we have that instance. Um, it, came we are from trying... a, it came up from a discussion uh, when Damien announced in uh, Gitter uh, the open source program uh, for uh, Jenkins Docker organization. And 
one user uh, noticed uh, the blue ocean image on Jenkins uh, uh, ski Jenkins user. CI Jenkins CI user. CI user was published uh, uh, a day ago and now an hour ago. And so we were uh, surprised and uh, Gavin uh, int, uh, intended us uh, it, it could be CloudBees, a CloudBees instance. And uh, indeed, uh, Olivier Lamy is, uh, he, he was is using it. So, so that we... instance yeah, was walking a few hours ago and it was mentioning uh, DevOptics on the left menu, which confirmed it's a CloudBees manage something. So it's not under our area. However, um, the Docker image for Blue Ocean, uh, we might need your help, Mark, on that area. I remember that image also being used on the Jenkins.io documentation at some point in time. Has it not been anymore. Deprecated? Yes. <laughs> About a year, year and a half ago, we removed it. We provided, we switched to a Docker and Docker technique and uh, it still works just fine. So we that that docker image while i hope it's still updated is not relevant to the jenkins docs anymore okay so that means we should be able to disable the job that builds that image and then if cloudbees needs to have that instance or someone else they would have to use their own docker hub account instead of this one that would also helps on the walk around uh, the ui in jenkins area uh so yeah um we'll we'll try to take care we are waiting for feedbacks from people inside cloudbees and based on that we'll create an issue on the help desk to see if there are actions on our site on that area thanks Hervé. good reminder that's all for me do you have other topics no many thanks everyone good job and see you next week Thank mm -hmm. you.